Hey, welcome back to the digestive system. We've already covered the mouth and the esophagus, so now we are moving our way into the stomach. Now, just a fair warning, I am filming this during a storm, so if you hear loud claps of thunder, please ignore it. All right. So your stomach after the esophagus uh, is a collection bag for the food full of acid so you can break all that food down chemically. Your stomach can hold about one liter or more. I say one liter because your stomach can stretch. It can expand. Uh, it is very stretchy. Even though it is a muscle, it's a smooth muscle, which gives it a bit more pliability. And it uses acid to break down food, like I said, make it easier to digest. So your mouth handled a lot of mechanical breakdown, crushing, a little bit of chemical with the amylase. Your stomach is gonna be the exact opposite, like I said in the vocab. It's mostly chemical breakdown with a little physical because it is a muscle it is gonna squeeze. So this is an old episode of Mythbusters where they actually wanted to work with um, an old myth of pop rocks and soda. They thought that if you mix the two, your stomach would explode because the gas would build up or whatever. Uh, spoiler warning, it is a myth, but just, to show a quick clip of it, so you see a stomach in action. The best course is to use a pig's stomach, which is actually uh, uh, physically very... There we go. So this would be the esophagus. You know, the pig swallows the food through here and then dips into uh, the stomach. And this one is full. They, they are blowing into the stomach to fill it up as much as they can. So this normally would be a little bit smaller close to a human stomach, which can hold about uh, between one and two pints, generally, of liquid. Okay, so one of the things we have to figure out is, uh, are we going to hang this thing? What about, uh, what about mounting it in our skeleton over there? So again, esophagus, stomach, and then this would be the exit. So you notice that the exit's not exactly perfectly down here, it's up here. That way the acid doesn't dip in. That means it's going to be a muscle action that squeezes the food into your intestines and like out the stomach into the intestines. And right now you can see this stomach is already bigger. Right? It started off maybe about this big and because they're filling it full of soda and pop rocks, which is producing a gas buildup, the stomach is actually expanding to almost twice its size already. Hey, Mikey, man, you can't drink those last two cans of soda. Dude, you are an animal. Dude, your stomach's gonna burst. Listen to that, you can hear those pop rocks going for yeah. it. Well, that's pretty impressive. Oh, there goes a burp. Mikey's burping. Come on. Oh, man. Look how big that stomach's getting. Even with time for digestion, the pot... So this stomach doesn't even fit, right? It's bigger than the hips, and the hips are the part of your body that's kind of sticking out. So this stomach, and your stomach as well, has the ability to expand and expand and expand without actually rupturing. Uh, it will eventually rupture. But before that happens, your own uh, digestive system would force you to throw up everything so that, you know, that doesn't happen. You know, this pig, if it was alive, would have thrown up long before it got to this point. All right. To get in and out of your stomach, you have specialized doorways. They are called sphincters. No, weird to pronounce, sphincter. Uh, you may have heard that word before. You may have heard it as uh, a bad word for your anus. Well, one, it's actually not a bad word. It's the legitimate terminology for the muscle. And yes, two, you're correct. Yeah. Uh, the sphincter is the type of muscle that your anus is. It's just your anus isn't the only one. You have a bunch of them throughout your body. Uh, Smaller ones are scattered all through your circulatory system, allowing blood to come and go as you need to. But these larger ones are big doorways of made of muscle uh, throughout your digestive system. We have five major ones in there. Our first one, seen in this picture right here, is uh, this one right here. So here's your esophagus and then your stomach. And this doorway, uh, when it contracts, it squeezes shut. And when you swallow the food, peristalsis is a muscle wave, right? It causes this muscle to open up, relax, and allows the food to drop in. And I actually want to show you that. So again, if you're squeamish, now's the time to look away.
this is called an endoscopy where they have um, a wire with a tiny camera on it and they stick it through into various places in your body. Uh, this one is, I believe, heading down uh, someone's esophagus right now. I went through this video previously. They didn't actually specify, but it looks like it's going through the esophagus into the stomach. So the squeezing you're seeing happen is the muscle rings. Hey, the camera didn't back up, the muscle squeezed around the camera. That's the peristalsis in the esophagus. And again, it's gonna happen again, squeezing around the camera, pushing the camera down a bit. And then you see it relaxing here. And then back here, there it is. That's the sphincter, the doorway. You know, we call that the cardiac sphincter because it's nothing to do with your heart, but it's close in proximity to your heart. So we call this the cardiac sphincter. And when this relaxes a bit, it opens up. Oh, more peristalsis. Again, the camera didn't move. It's, that's the muscle moving around the camera. And the doctors are gonna to try to get this camera through that sphincter. It's a bit more relaxed, there we go. Going through and we are now into the stomach. This person's stomach contents appears to have been removed because I don't see any acid. And then in the back, we see what's called the pyloric sphincter. It's the second sphincter that would exit the stomach into the intestines. And he said more peristalsis and moves, peristalsis moves through the stomach to help to go into uh, the next level. Now at this point, the camera is moving because it's not actually trying to get into the intestines. The camera is trying to find some kind of growth that they're going to remove and I'm not going to subject you to that. So. All right, so if you had closed your eyes, now it's a good time you can start looking again at my normal notes. Right. So that's what we saw. We saw the camera go through here. We saw the peristalsis move around the camera and then got forced through this cardiac sphincter into the stomach and then up to this pyloric sphincter, which would then go into the intestines, but the camera didn't go that far. So as I said, for the sake of the notes, now cardiac sphincter is the end up here, closer to the heart. If you look at this person, his sphincter would be right here, if you can see my mouse moving, and up here is his heart. So that is the sphincter that is closest to the heart. Your stomach is full of hydrochloric acid, which is going to chemically break it down. This is actual chemistry, right? When this person ate the banana, they munched it, they crushed it. A little bit of the chemical from the amylase messed with it, but mostly it was still a banana when it entered the stomach. Here we go. But the acid chemically breaks down that banana. And by chemically breaks down, I mean the molecules are being ripped apart, right? The banana molecules, once they're ripped apart, they're no longer banana molecules. They're just carbohydrates and protein and lipid and whatever, right? They're just basic molecules floating around. At this point, it is a gross, disgusting mush. Before, we called it a bolus, right? You chewed up your food and swallowed the bolus. When your acid messes with it, chemistry physically changes chemically changes exactly what it is. It's no longer banana anymore. It's no longer food anymore. We now change the word from bolus to chyme. Now, this person is pouring hydrochloric acid into a glass dish. Hydrochloric acid will destroy most anything, but glass is fine. That's nice and safe. And one of the most powerful acids we have available does not hurt glass. Keep that in mind. You never want to swallow glass, guys, beyond the obvious. Also, you won't break it down. So it'll stay glass in there. All right, so this person is putting a hamburger right into the hydrochloric acid. Now this will not be as uh, fast as it is in your stomach because by the time a hamburger reaches your stomach, I'll fast forward this. By the time a hamburger reaches your stomach, you chewed it up, the amylase broke it down. And because it's chewed up, the acid can get in all the nooks and crannies of the bolus. In this case, this is a full hamburger, so this is a very long time. Wait, they are doing a fast forward of it. Here we go. So this time lapse, we, you know, we're seeing the molecules break off and spread across the acid. 
So the hamburger is no longer a hamburger. The acid is no longer an acid. Now it is a combined mush we call chyme. Yes, your stomach no longer has acid in it. You would actually have to make more acid. Right. And that is not what's attached to the burger, all right? The, what's attached to the burger is still partially burger. Down here is your stomach contents, and that's what you're now going to digest. I lied when I said it wasn't queasy. I apologize, but at least it's not body part queasy. This one is not food related. This, I just want to show you how powerful that hydrochloric acid in your stomach actually is. So we got another glass dish. And any second now, it's further to go, pouring hydrochloric acid in there. Now they are going to put a soda tap. Like the thing that you use to open up a can of soda, they ripped it off and they're putting on put it in the glass dish. So there it is sitting at the bottom. It has a slow start, but you see the bubbles happening. This is chemistry happening, guys. The molecules of the acid and the molecules of the metal are intermingling. Right? The metal is metal molecules are getting ripped apart. It's aluminum, by the way. The aluminum molecules are getting ripped apart and joining with the acid molecules and they are becoming a new substance. So it's no longer metal, it's no longer acid, it's now going to become something different. In this case, it's becoming a gas and bubbling its way out. Now there's not enough metal to completely cancel out all the acid, so it would still be a lot of acid in there, but anything that interacts with the metal changes. And that's what happens in your stomach with the food. The acid and the food cancel each other out and become something different. That word I already said, it becomes kind. A little bit of a fast forward here. And we see only a little bit of metal left and then going, 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 gone. There is no metal left in there. Now, what is preventing all of that acid from breaking you down? Like I said, it's one of the most powerful acids we have available to us. Like it can break down almost anything. I said almost anything. Turns out it's not very strong about against certain types of mucus, as in the mucus that lines your stomach. All right, so we have a very powerful, thick mucus-based stomach lining that is acid-proof keeps the acid from dissolving your stomach away. Uh, something that we are going to have an assignment on coming up is ulcers, stomach ulcers. I thought this was actually next, I guess I'll get to it in a little bit, but your stomach ulcer is when something is able to break away that lining, usually bacteria, like some kind of bacteria that's able to survive in your acid starts eating your mucus, and then with the mucus gone, the acid burns your stomach. That's called an ulcer. If it burns all the way through the other side, we refer to that as a bleeding ulcer. And both cases are major medical issues, but a bleeding ulcer can become deadly. Uh, other kind of ulcers, which I earn here someplace, esophageal ulcer is when the acid jumps up here and gives you heartburn too much. That's what heartburn is, by the way. And then uh, a duodenal ulcer because this part of your small intestine is known as a duodenum, uh, or duodenum, I've heard it pronounced. Uh, duodenal ulcers, uh, when the acid pours in here, when it shouldn't. Anyway, this is the cardiac sphincter. Down here is known as the pyloric sphincter. When this opens up, this chyme is going to move down and go through your intestines, which is a different video. Ah, there's my ulcer information. So, ulcer, a hole in the mucus. Like I said, certain types of bacteria eat away the lining, and the acid then burns the flesh of your stomach without that protection. All right. uh, I got two pictures here. This is a gastric ulcer. Down here would be the pyloric sphincter, and the ulcer is up here. Uh, with the bacterial infection along with it, and that's the white you're seeing.
over here to duodenal ulcer, if you were to move past this sphincter through this opening down here, you would end up in this area and the acid would burn down here because you actually don't have the protective lining. So the acid dripping down here is a consistent drip would cause an ulcer as well. All right. So let's get away from the medical problems and talk about your stomach working correctly. Now, the stomach is a muscle and it's used to churn the food. Churn is a specific type of movement. It's what you use to turn milk into butter, right? You churn butter. It's a certain kind of sloshing motion shown in this animation right here. And if you had food in there, there's our hamburger again, your stomach would actually physically break it apart, there we go, into smaller pieces, and that allows the acid to get more surface area that it normally wouldn't have had, breaking it down even more. The smaller the pieces are, the easier it is for the acid to get to it until it's no longer food. It becomes chyme. And there's the word chyme. This is not pronounced chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, it is pronounced chyme. This is the broken down remains of the food particles. It's no longer food, it's no longer stomach acid. It is a combined slosh that we can now digest. All right, it is a soup of nutrients. And we didn't actually absorb any of the nutrients. Right? I told you once before that your body is basically a donut with a hole going right through the middle, right? This hole is just the food went in the mouth and it's traveling through and it'll come out the other side. As it's traveling through, we are going to have to absorb all those good nutrients as it's moving. We have not done that yet, right? All we did was make it into something that we can use. Once it goes through this pyloric sphincter, then we can actually start absorbing. So when it's ready, when it uh, is ready, the chyme will move towards that pyloric sphincter and we will start getting ready to digest it, to absorb it in the small intestine. And I say digest because I said digestion is a chemical breakdown as well as a physical one, and it will continue to chemically break down with other chemicals in the intestines. But that is a video for a later date. Before we can get to that, actually, this will also be the next one. We need to talk about the uh, accessory organs.